Welcome to a full review of the Mazda 3 in the new generation. Today with the Skyactiv X engine, this petrol engine with a diesel technology inside. What about that one? We'll explain you all about it. And of course, fastback also comparison to the hatch. Because last time we have been focusing on the hatch, this time a little bit more on this sedan building style. But everything counts for both body types. We'll tell you all about the differences. And of course, all the details you need to know on exterior, interior and the driving experience. Comparing it to the normal petrol engine here to the Sky Active X. What are the pros, what are maybe the cons. And also to the recent test ride of the Mazda CX-30, this platform identical SUV. Which one should you actually go for? So all those interesting aspects. And as you know, here in Auto Fuel, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front, the new Master 3 has this more three-dimensional design, especially here with the front grille, so definitely sportier. And they do not do any special sports trim or so. The base trim levels also get the very same design, and I think that's pretty honest to the customers, or very fair to the customers. It's just that today we have a little sedan focus here. Most of the things are identical, hatch and sedan. It's just that the front grille here with the sedan has a more horizontal layout with those let's say horizontal dots, whereas the hatch has smaller round dots in the front grille. It's a minor detail. Headlamps start LED as standard, optional matrix LED you can also get, and soul red crystal is the color here for today, a very likable color and has you know, little nuances in there. So very strong one, I mean, works both for the hatch and for the sedan. The Mazda 3 sedan, or fastback, how they call it, is 4 meters 66, 183 inches or 15 foot 2. And that's about 20 centimeters or 8 inches longer than the Mazda 3 hatch. They have the very same wheelbase, it's just this rear overhang which is different, which will then result in a different trunk. We'll also tell you more about that later. And we also have some hatch shots Hatch shots, not headshots. <laughs> headshots so that you can actually compare the look a little bit. Which one would you actually go for? Hatch or here the sedan? And well, a fastback would have the, to me, you know, the trunk that goes all the way open like this. So this to me is a sedan, even if they call it fastback. Then again, the main designer is right here above the door handles, but you see they rather use round shapes. You either get 16 inch aluminum wheels as standard or optional those 18 inch. You can go for this design package or in a higher trim, sometimes they call it selection for example, also in the German market. And then you get for example those bigger wheels, you get keyless entry and uh, the climate AC automatic and not the standard AC, some, you know, some additional features then. But that's you know on a minor level, so there are some upgrades available, but also a lot of standard equipment with this car. By the way, we're calling out to you here today from Bulgaria, so all the best greetings to our fans here also in Bulgaria. Here a nice round shape in the rear, but overall a classic sedan building style. Again, would like to know which one would you go for? Well, the hatch is a little bit more dramatic in the rear design, but here, this three-quarter rear perspective is also the chocolate side of the sedan somehow, you know, with this floating line then. More modern tail lamps if you compare it to the predecessor and also chassis-wise, the, the chassis is stiffer now than the predecessor generation. The opening for the trunk is, by the way, here uh, under the logo. Pretty interesting. Well, some things, you know, about this car, a lot of things are already premium alike, so high build quality and so on, but some things, you know, there they save some money. For example, you know how the stuff is sounding when you close and open it. So that really sounds very cheap, but yet again, some other details are really top-notch with this car. Then you can see also on this exhaust, those ones are real exhaust, so no fake exhaust tips here whatsoever. And I think overall, let's say, yeah, it's somewhat a conservative design with a little spice. 
as for the engines, let's start with the ones we do not have to focus on today. There's 1.8 liter diesel with about 120 horsepower available. And then there's also a naturally aspirated petrol engine, two liter of displacement, are also about 120 horsepower. And both have about 10 and a half seconds as for the acceleration to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And both are available either with a six-speed manual gearbox or with a six-speed automatic gearbox. The diesel not as all-wheel drive, the petrol also not as all-wheel drive, at least for the Master 3. In the CX-30, the small, or let's say the low horsepower petrol engine is also available as all-wheel drive, but not here in the Master 3. Then, this year in the new Sky Active x 2 liter of displacement, also a petrol engine, 180 horsepower, so 60 horsepower more than the other ones. This one here, available also as manual gearbox or with automatic gearbox. And here, both in the CX-30 and also in the Master 3, here it would be the only with the all-wheel drive in this Master 3. So this one here, also available with all-wheel drive. That is then front plus rear on demand because this one is still a front-wheel driven platform. Today we have it with the front-wheel drive only. Recently with the CX-30, we also had the Sky Active X with the all-wheel drive. And here the acceleration figure is about two seconds faster, so around 8.5 seconds. Interesting is the SPCCI, the Spark Controlled Compression Ignition. What does it mean? Usually a petrol engine uses a spark plug to ignite the fuel, and then it rather, you know, it, it builds, you know, the combustion builds from the inside to the outside. And a diesel would use compression ignition, so everything is compressed that much that it ignites itself, and everything explodes everywhere, so to say. And this one here uses this diesel technology with a spark plug, like in a petrol engine, but then the small spark, spark, so to say, leads over to the compression ignition of a diesel kind of style. And they want to achieve by that, that they have less fuel consumption, but yet at the same time, more power, more torque. If this really works, we will find out today in the driving part. This is the standard key fob, matte surface, but then the controls small and on the side and overall it doesn't feel too premium, this key. So not too happy about the key fob. However, keyless entry is also available. Op that is an option actually, when you put your hand on the outside to close it, then here also the mirrors flip in and when you put your hand on the inside, the mirrors flip out and the car opens actually. Door closing sound. Yeah, it's somewhat okay, but surely not the strength of this car. But there are more strengths to come. Good build quality with soft touch inside of the doors. Then there's a leather red cover. You can also get the bright one, for example. Also good finish of the buttons here, of the window levers. Then this one is the optional Bose sound system. More speakers than the standard one. And it delivers actually a quite decent sound. Rather slim door pockets for bottles. Mm, doesn't fit that well actually and now we come to even more strength of this car for example here also a nice leather red cover for the top of the dashboard this sporty steering wheel and also with nice finish of those buttons even with nice clicking sound and this feels really good this is rather you know like a premium atmosphere when you control all of that and we'll soon take a deep look of all those displays and so on and there's a gap here in the front for the head-up display and the head-up display is standard, yes. That's a big surprise, head-up display standard. Standard AC, standard, the base infotainment system, standard. Blind spot monitor is standard. And yeah, that's everything, you know, really unusual. Those seats here, by the way, they are at the moment animal skin setup, but the base one comes with fabric and that's just fine and also saves you money and it stays cooler in summer and also warm in winter. The comfort here is a little bit better than in the previous generation Master 3, so they worked on the ergonomics of this seat. Um, even better when you put it a little bit higher in the rear, then you know, pelvis is a little bit more upright. When you put it all the way down, with 1m86 or 6 foot one still leaves some headroom. There is also a glass roof available that, you know, gets a little bit more narrow than in the front as for the headroom, have to be aware of that, but in the rear it raises then just again, but it's a, it's a small one. I think you can see that one in our very first Master 3 episode. We will also link that one. Also, if you want to see some more of the hatch, for example, but 
definitely also very interesting to see that review. Then the steering wheel can be adjusted up and down and also inward and outward again. Pretty nice and good process. That's also one of the things where they really have improved the build quality. So um, the first impression here is actually very decent. Thinking about difference, Mazda CX-30 SUV style, there you sit more upright and a little bit more comfortable definitely. This is here a standard compact hatch or compact sedan seating position. So for tall people it's okay, but not super, super, super comfortable. Interior overview, a very clean layout here in this new generation and a nice high class leather red use here. Soft touch at the dashboard that goes all the way through horizontal. The upper dashboard is also soft touch. Standard setup is this 8.8 .8 inch screen together with a seven inch digital instrument in the middle part, outside analog. And this one here is also standard as it is, really cool, so no different size available and no touch whatsoever. They just rely on the central control knob, which is pro and con definitely, but safer while driving. That's definitely very nice. Soon also more details to this very screen. And again, head-up display also standard. This climate unit, and there's a standard one, then there's this automatic with this screen available and here with a metal knurled knob, so high class quality. That's really cool and again a premium style element. Heated steering wheel is an option next to the heated seats for both sides. Then you have a normal USB-A supply in the front. You can connect your phone right there and put it in a cubby hole in the front, two cup holders. Then here manual gearbox with a nice feedback um, when putting in the gears. That's lovely. Soon and more details when we drive the car. Yeah and then this lower control knob right there which is also from good quality and also from nice sound and some hotkeys so you get everything you need and the volume knob that is often desired by the customer that this one is still manual and also this cover here you slide it back strangely but then when you have slid it back then you can open it actually to the rear and when you open it there's more cubby hole inside and also USB-A supply and the infotainment system up close here with the central control knob you can zoom in and out that's easily done and everything is actually rather intuitive there's a hotkey then to get to the main menu that looks like this and they kept it relatively simple and lean if you want to go to the apple carplay and with auto mode you click right on the central control knob and then you are in this mode which is like really using all the way of the screen so that's well done and this optional bose sound system oh by the way um can also recommend this song it's a great song by jason ross and it's a nice surround sound here it's like really awesome so um yeah that is probably one of the um, options i would go for here with this car other than that you can stay with the standard functions most of the time go back to the standard screen and then also master screen back here again that you can also access gps well the only thing you see here the software of the gps looks a little bit like let's say poor and old school so that could have been a little bit more modern and better that's maybe the only thing we can um, you know talk about here other than that everything is quite well done and also intuitively as i said and with the cx30 i also found out that here when you go to the sound settings um, there are special audio settings also for the sound system and you can put it here to the different stereo mode for example um, or here also the center point and put it on this one is even more surround sound so i can really recommend to um, you know go for that one um, that is actually the best setting to have even more surround sound in this vehicle. So overall I think you can live with this infotainment system also if you don't have a touchscreen. The only thing I would you know really like when you add in destination for example and search something that you don't go to this menu then that you can for example just you know use the touch here that would have been a cool function can also try to use the voice input then um, but it's not a super free speech mode as we know from other new vehicles oh and the rear view camera has a nice resolution so it's very crystal clear and you can also see this fake drone view from above there due to those side cameras um, so you have a very good it was an applied parking brake very good visibility and see where you're going and also those helping lines are helping you you can also get this front camera right there and this has also the great same resolution. Yeah, a little bit off-road here for you today. And here again, the nice sporty and clean steering wheel design here with the volume control and again, the nice clicking 
sound in photoreceptive view consumption, for example, and on the right side, then distance for the ACC, and again, also standard, just to mention again, and set the speed of the cruise control, or also change the mode if you want that lane assist or not. And one more close up here at the digital instruments. Well, they are digital in the middle right there, and then left and right is actually analog, but it's kept relatively simple and clean. So overall satisfied with it. You can also change it to this one here that you can see a digital speed better. And as an alternative, you can see the digital speed here in the head-up display. Also a good view, good addition, good safety feature. You can just keep your line of sight on the center of the road. And you also have some GPS information in there then. And what I also like, a frameless rear mirror always adds so much class to the car. So what about the rear compartment? Yeah, with this dark interior, Everything looks really dark in this car, um, at least the ceiling is bright, yeah, um, but you can still you know, take a look at it on camera. What's interesting, by the way, here, the rear right there, this is not hard pack, so it also has a soft surface. We hardly see that in compact vehicles and especially not in the non-premium segment, so really cool, also with leatherette here on the inside. Yeah, and then this is one of the disadvantages of this car. I mean, I can still fit here somewhat, but I do hit um, the back of the seat here with my knees, um, also headroom wise, that works. Can put a hand over my head with one means 86 or 6 foot 1. The seating position here in general is okay, but again, for tall adults, if you drive that car with four tall adults, yeah, that's the, the limit. So you would need to go a segment higher than with Mazda. We had a better result recently in the Mazda CX 30. Um, although it has the shorter wheelbase, but the seats are a little bit more upright, so then, you know, that evens it out a little bit. Then, isofix are at the outside of those seats. In the middle part here, you can so, yeah, also somewhat sit when you put your knees between those seats or so, but um, then I also hit my head at the seating, so that's also not, you know, the the best as for that and there's nothing here at the back part of this console but yet again you have to think about yeah they also need to keep a certain price and here some adaptive couples also as for the armrest so the trunk of course the hatch is somewhat better as for loading in and out because it's just wider in here but then the sedan has an advantage leader figure is 360 liters for the hatch here 450 liters for the sedan that's of course just more because it's longer and you remember the overhang was 20 centimeters longer and that's exactly how this trunk is longer so this is here one meters and ten and the hatch is 90 centimeters in length so that's then here this part is the difference you're more flexible than with the sedan height here is somewhat comparable with the hatch with the cover you have then so it's actually 52 centimeters, so you can also live with that. Um, as for the width here in the front, here where as we go deeper in, it's about a meter, a little bit less than a meter, but here in the front right there, this is even longer. This is, you know, closer to one meters and 20. So I think you can live with that. And then when I put a backpack in here, you can see as for the height, the backpack also fits in just like this upright. You can also release the seats right here and here and then you have to go around and flip the seats so a little bit of work <laughs> needed right there so here we go yeah um yeah with the middle oh, i have to squish a little bit down because it hits actually the front armrest when it's put backwards very interesting so, and now the maximum length to the driver's seat as I would be driving, and that's of course then also different to the hatch. Here we go with about 1 meters and 80. Only thing here, you know, those are some minor details like this here. You can see this. This is not that well built here. So, yeah, a little, I wouldn't say it's a build quality issue, but it's just in the beauty thing they could work on that. But I think we only pay attention to those details now because some of the other features are really well done in this car. So we start to look at more details also with the Mazda vehicles.
Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge. Here, starting in Sofia, Bulgaria, the capital. And this is the first time I'm driving a car here, actually. And again, best greetings to all fans from Bulgaria. It's quite good that we come around and visit all of your home countries. So it's also a little bit more variation for you. And I think always nice that at some point, maybe we're in your home country and you can, you know, see some roads you know or have been driving on and so on. So we start with a little bit of you know, city traffic and so on. We head out to the countryside as well. All the different aspects we want to cover here. This one is the sedan we're driving this time because in the initial Master 3 review we had like a hatch focus. Also, with the CX-30 recently, we've been driving the Sky Active X for the very first time. Also tune into that review as a comparison. So I will also tell you a little bit more comparison to the Master CX-30, to that compact SUV on the very same platform. And here today, the Sky Active X engine with manual drive and also with front wheel drive only, because last time we had it done as the all wheel drive. So different comparison aspects we will also cover in this driving part. In general, first about the Master 3, what about sedan versus hatch? As I mentioned earlier, they have the very same wheelbase. So the agile driving handling is not too different. Um, yeah, there's a little bit more overhang in the rear, so the weight balance is a little bit different, but it's not that you would feel much of it. I also asked the engineers if they would change any suspension settings. Some manufacturers put the little sedan a little bit softer as for the setting than the hatch or something, but they actually told me no, we just kept it the very same. So there is no difference then or no major difference in driving hatch or the sedan. You just have a longer trunk here. However, the hatch can be you know, easier loaded in and out. So those are the two major differences we also shown you in the interior part. The Master 3 experience here in this new generation with this new platform, you have a stiffer chassis, it feels more agile, so you can have a little bit more fun in driving. And also it's way more silent. So um, I guess you can already pick it up here um, that I don't have to raise my voice that much. Blind spot monitor is standard equipment. You can see the yellow triangle flashing right there at the moment. The head up display I'm looking at is standard. Also, the ACC, the adaptive cruise control I'll use soon on the steam wheel is standard. So, that's really remarkable. And also, probably one of my favorite features of this car that the standard equipment is so well equipped that you can just buy the car from stock and that's it without adding any extras. Yeah, the Bose sound system is pretty nice. That one would be um, an option I would actually go for. And then, yeah, I mean, 18 inch if you want to have the visual, but of course the ride will be a little bit softer with 16 inch. Here we have the design pack or the selection trim, depending on how it's called in your market. And that is with the 18 inch aluminum wheels. And they are of course then a little bit stiffer than the 16 inch, but 18 is still somewhat okay, you know, you can, um, you could still have a good sportiness versus comfort compromise. I'm shifting here a lot definitely when I'm, you know, still in somewhat uh, urban surrounding. And this is really so much fun. They really got the shifting right with this car, also with the CX-30. So you have first a very smooth experience when you put in the next gear. And then, so there's no, not much resistance, but then at the very end, of the shifting process, you have like this plop and this satisfying feedback from the manual gearbox. And this is exactly the way it's supposed to be. So that's perfectly done. And it's also one of the very rare cars where I would say, yeah, go for the manual gearbox. You save some money with it. Um, the automatic transmissions at Mazda usually also are a little bit higher in the fuel consumption. And you have this you know, somewhat satisfying feedback from the manual gearbox. So I am a fan of automatic gearboxes just for the comfort and being in, in city traffic and so on because it's just easier to drive. But then here again, this might be one of the few exceptions to get, of course, with the Master MX-5 and so on. And I mean, yeah, why not? But it's definitely good to have this experience in here for you. 
once more, especially like from second to third gears. It's just so much fun and um, really get great that they, um, whoa, that is some serious driving over the red light. Is that normal here? So Bulgarian viewers, please tell me, is it normal here to drive over the red, red traffic light? Um, yeah, some Germans do that as well, but um, usually in like in the, like the last second or so, but this was like three seconds or something. <laughs> okay, maybe it was just an exception. I don't know. Oh yeah, um, recently when we were driving the CX-30, I was joking a little bit, you know, about yeah, Germans are not really able to properly drive a roundabout, but then again, Italians and French, they, you know, a little bit more like, like say, scroll alike in traffic a little bit. And, you know, that was just like playing a little bit jokingly with stereotypes. And I think everyone knew what I meant. And sometimes there's a little bit truth in it, but that was nothing like serious. But then I got, got this one comment like, Thomas, you are a racist. You are a racist. You are like, a, you know, like a racist in favor of Germans. And I was asking like, okay, saying like Germans are not really capable of driving roundabouts properly. How is it racist and like favoring Germans? I mean, come on, <laughs> not everything has to be taken seriously. Yeah, horse carriage as well, the poor horses, animal abuse. So, but so far here in city traffic, feeling very well, um, very well situated and calm in this car. If you ask yourself about the difference, the X30 here and the Master 3, the C30 as this compact SUV is more comfortable. You have a more upright seating position. This one in the Master 3, however, has a little bit more, you know, a sporty orientation as for that. It is good and comfortable as for a compact size vehicle, yes, because I also worked on the on the seating setup as I explained earlier, with you know the um, more natural form, how your spine is so be situated in, um, in the seat. But still, the CX-30 more comfortable as the SUV. But the rest of the overall driving feeling is somewhat similar because they use the very same platform. We will also head out soon there, but this great noise insulation, really, you know, there's a lot of traffic here and a lot of cars standing right next to us and so on, but I'm still in a very calm and collected mood because of the good noise insulation. And of course, here in a non-premium priced car, they cannot insulate everything and spend super much money on it. So what did they actually do? So Mazda tried to focus try to focus on the noise insulation which is just in your head area, so close to your ears, you know? And so this is um, a measure that you can have a good effect on the noise insulation without spending too much money on, you know, insulating everything. And I think that's also they were definitely a clever idea. The steering feeling is also excellent because it's one of the very rare cars where we have a natural steering feeling. So we have a lot of direct or nicely progressive steering wheels on the market right now. They're easy to steer and you can park in and out quite easily and so on. But yet again, they don't offer you a connection to the road. And here it's different, that's really cool. So it is easy enough to steer, but there's no dead zone area. It does not feel like in a computer or, you know, I always say like arcade style. Um, it really feels still natural that you have somewhat this mechanical connection, you know, from, from driver, the, the car and the road. I think that also speaks, you know, you know, for the overall driving concept of this car. Also, what about this Sky Active X engine? So. We've been comparing also in the CX-30, we've been driving the diesel and the Skyactiv G, the normal petrol engine. We've driven that one also in the Master 3 already at the first driving event. And then the Skyactiv X. So since this one has the same displacement and also based on this naturally aspirated and, um, um, petrol engine, they have somewhat the same driving characteristics. So you still have the feeling here of driving a naturally aspirated petrol engine. You don't have the feeling that you would drive a diesel although there is this diesel technology in there with the, um, uh, with the compression, compression ignition, which is then, you know, initiated by a spark. So like this mix, spark plug petrol engine, compression ignition diesel, the mix between therefore also X. But still, you have a petrol engine feeling and also not a turbo petrol engine feeling. So where the turbo sets in, you know, after like a second and then really pushes you forward, this is a very linear, 
power output. So um, you also use some more RPMs if you like and you have a very smooth driving feeling and that's what I like about driving naturally aspirated petrol engines and um, you know it's quite sad that they almost disappeared on the market. It's, n it's not because they are like so so much you know worse to turbo engines it's more about the governmental regulations which then led to downsizing and putting turbos in those, down, in those downsized engines. It's not the best for the environment or for the people or for pollution. That's also the reason why they needed all those particle filters now in those smaller turbo engines because this, you know, high revving engines, they produce actually more of those very small particles. So, yeah, some of the old, naturally, big naturally um, aspirated engines can actually be also sometimes better for the environment. It's like uh, it's hard to believe then as for this respect. And also what I said in the engine part, which is well, I find very interesting that they had to put a particle filter in this engine, but not because they didn't fulfill the regulations for the exhaust. They put it actually in inside the engine to have a cleaner airflow for this compressor, that it's longer lasting. That is also very interesting and I think crucial aspect because at the moment when we're doing this review, we cannot say how is it in five years when a couple of hundred thousand of those Skyactiv cars are on the road. It's a new engine technology, so you have to be aware of that. I'm not saying you should not buy it for that reason, but just be aware of that. When you are one of the first buyers, you're also somewhat like a guinea pig, you know, to you know, when you're testing that. So, um, yeah. Have to think about that. But what we can say positively about the engine, of course, it has more power. So we have 60 horsepower more than in the you know, small horsepower tuned petrol engine. You feel that you drive a little bit more calmer because you don't have to push the RPMs that much. When you're going uphill a while, then it's also an easier drive. You don't have to shift that often as you would do with the smaller horsepower spec. It is, of course, more fun to drive also. The acceleration figure difference would be in this one here, depending on if you have automatic or not, all-wheel drive or not, but everything around eight and a half seconds, zero to 100 kilometers or zero to 62 miles an hour. Whereas the petrol and the diesel engine that is available here are, again, also depending on, you know, automatic, all-wheel drive or not, all-wheel drive not available for the diesel, by the way, they are around 10.5 seconds. So it's about two seconds difference and you feel that. So it's easier and more fun to drive with the Sky Active X engine because it has more power. But there's no turbo feeling, as I said, so you just have a little bit more punch. And as we have been driving, whoa, okay, <laughs> looks like a junkyard here. Um, we'll get out to the motorway now and also head out to some more beautiful countryside. So the interesting thing is really. Um, that they still kept this natural driving feeling. I think that's also, you know, pretty cool. Also, as we've been driving the prototype model of this one, um, I think now two years ago or so, there was like an indicator which you cannot see at the moment. So they didn't want to reveal it to the customer, but they put an indicator in the prototype model that when is this um, SPCCI, the spark controlled combustion, um, compression, combustion, ignition, yeah, something like that it was. Come here. Um, yeah, because SPCCI, you know, I think that's like a compression comp controlled, whatever. <laughs> so when they put that in, um, you could always see like when, when was it active and when not. And it was always changing. And I think it's also like not to confuse the customer. So it's not that it's always active, but quite frequently. So, uh, you know, that's, that's how it works. Now we're on the motorway. Also shift to a higher gear. Let's put it in the sixth gear. Then we can also set the cruise control right there. And again, as I said, it's an adaptive one. You can also set the distance of the car in front of you. And here still now, you know, 80, about 80 kilometers an hour on, on the motorway. Very silent, good noise insulation. Really like that. We also stay on that one here. I can control the touchscreen well, very well while driving, by the way. So that was also one thing I wanted initially about Master 3 and Master CX-30 that they disallow the touchscreen but since the menu structure is 
quite easy and nice. Um, you know, I'm feeling quite good with it. And it's also far away. I have it good in my line of sight, but I cannot touch it anyway. Then. So zoom in and out here, for example, and the most important information I have then also here in my line of sight in the head-up display. So I'm actually quite happy with the system overall. And everything I tried to find and so on, I could find very well with this MMI knob as well. And I will keep you also updated about the fuel consumption later on once more. Why is it 50 here on the motorway? Yeah, Strange. exactly. Why? I don't know. Change it to... Ah, so the motorway is already stopped. Yeah, okay. I see. Interesting. So, yeah, you know, when you come as a German to some other motorways, like, I can be so slow, so slow. But the disadvantage of that is, like, the high speed limits in Germany, they let, they lead to that some of the drives, like, we always say, like, with uh, driving with a with knife between your teeth, and like, ah, aggression, faster, faster. So it's always, like, pro and cons um, to, to that approach of different speed limits, definitely. So we, what is actually also good that we have some roads which are a little bit destroyed here and so far the suspension does a good job. However, here with the uh, Mazda cars, and it's better definitely in the new generation of the Mazda 3, but in general you can say that suspension is good, yes, but that's maybe something where the competition at some point is a little bit ahead, especially when they offer an adaptive suspension in this very segment which is not available for, for this one. They just have the fixed suspension. Again, price-wise, that's totally fine. And you always think about when you buy an adaptive suspension, you have to pay an extra price. Hmm, yeah. So that can be a problem as well. So, but we don't feel too uncomfortable when we are going over those potholes and so on. It's totally fine. It's really, the suspension is good, but let's say not excellent. But I think, you know, considering the price, considering the price, it's excellent. You know what I mean? So, so, still feeling comfortable and, well, fuel consumption-wise, we had some, you know, city traffic right there, then we also kept it a little bit steady and so on. And so the fuel consumption is dropping bit by bit. And in our very first, it was a rather short test of the Sky Active X. We had about seven liters and one kilometers, which is like, you know, 34 MPG, 41 MPG UK. And that was with the all-wheel drive, but the all-wheel drive, of course, is always giving you, you know, a little bit worse fuel consumption, and this time front-wheel drive only. And now, why is anyone, why is someone honing? Now it's green. And now we are about six liters on, on uh, one kilometers, and yeah, that's already better. So um, six liters one kilometers, that's rather towards like the, you know, 40 mpg mark us and even higher like 45 47 mpg uk and that's really good you know so um, i hope we can keep this figure definitely or maybe even drop it below or something we will definitely try and that would be actually also a few consumption we had the same then in the small petrol engine well same displacement small horsepower um, petrol engine and that would be actually quite good that you can have the same fuel consumption but still with a lot more power and that's actually what they also intended to have so if you go up here and i think then you know it can make some sense however if you think about um, the extra price you pay um, when we take a german list price as a reference and will be somewhat similar also in other markets so if you jump from the small horsepower spec petrol engine the sky FTG, to the sky x then you pay about three and a half thousand euros extra for that one hmm. we all have we know we have tested both and hog and i really agree that this one is more fun it's easier to drive yes and if you think about yeah you know what the hell three and a half thousand you know just go for it i want the best one the best driving experience i have it's okay and especially when the consumption is not, you know, way higher than with the other one. That's definitely very good. But then again, if you have to think about the price and you want the best price performance deal, the small petrol engine, we both agreed, is just fine. It's also fun to drive, has this natural driving um, uh, feeling. Just at some point when you have some uphills especially. 
then you just have to push it a little bit more. But then again, justifying three and a half thousand euros extra price in this segment, if you have to look at the money, no. Again, if you want most fun, and that's definitely more fun, a little bit more elaborate to drive, um, then it's definitely interesting. And automatic gearbox, which you can have for all, Skyactiv G, Skyactiv X, and also the Skyactiv D, the diesel. Automatic gearbox, always about 2,000 euros extra. And there was also a question, yeah, I mean, if you drive in traffic quite often, then it might make sense just to offer you this best comfort. And I usually always say, as I said initially, take the automatic gearbox, take the comfort. But this is the very rare case where the manual gearbox is so well done that you might also be just satisfied with that. And if you then think about not going for the automatic, not going for the Skyactiv X, staying with the base engine, then you can save a lot of money and have a very nice, attractive entry price. Yet again, looking just at this engine, it's definitely a fantastic driving feeling we're having here so far. It also fits every well to, everything well together. Sometimes there are some parts of the cars which are maybe way better than the other one or way worse than another part. But here, the whole composition of the car between them, you know, the engine, the power output, driving feeling, steering feeling, suspension and so on, everything fits very well together and creates, you know, this, this this whole image of the car which is you know very very solid it's of course not a car where we say this is the most emotional car i have ever driven but yet again you have a very attractive styling on the exterior not for premium pricing you have a nice and sporty still a fun driving experience and then also you know a couple of new technologies and all those additional assistance systems which are well, additional, but not additional in the price list, most of the stuff is included. That's really, you know, that's, that's very cool. So, um, and that makes this, you know, this whole car package they're offering here, again, a very, very good one. Don't, and don't forget the special color. Yeah, yeah, and the um, Soul Crystal Red is, of course, you know, beautiful color on the, on the exterior, definitely. And I, I also like at Master this, um, this good, good point, this um, Moonstone, I think we had it on the Mazda MX-5 once when we were at um, Transfagarashan Road in Romania. You have to check out that episode, it was beautiful, definitely. Um, yeah, that, that's like you know, this white-ish, but not really white color. That was you know, a very, very beautiful one. So definitely very interesting aspects here. The only thing that is missing for this driving part is to give it a real go and also hit it to some winding corners. And that's what we're doing now. So, some dynamic impressions right here. We're going down in first. And the first thing we notice again in those winding corners is that you have this natural driving feeling. Look at the steering. So, it really gives me a good connection to the road. It doesn't feel exaggerated is progressive enough. I can keep my hands at the steering wheel. I don't have to, you know, grab around for more steering input. And it's also not too light. So I have enough feedback from the, from the steering wheel. So it doesn't feel like um, some of the new cars where we just steer in the air or so, you know, you know what I mean? Also with the Skyactive X engine, I can keep it, for example, in the third gear, and even if we go uphill now a little bit and I already at some speed, I can just apply some more throttle and that's it, so I don't have to shift down immediately. That would be one thing, you know, with, with the 120 horsepower petrol engine, that at some point, you know, you might need to shift down earlier or something, you know. The diesel has a little bit more torque, that's also a little bit more comfortable to drive, but the overall accelerating figures, they don't differ that much then between diesel and the Skyactiv G. Here the Skyactiv X, as I said, is a little bit faster. Well, a little bit, well, two seconds faster. It's, it's actually significant also in the acceleration figure. But again, also 180 horsepower, so also 60 horsepower more each than the other engines. And it's really a lot of fun. Remember, this is a, by the way, a hatch in front of us, also in this sole red crystal color. Is one of the most beautiful red colors on the market, I think. You know, look at those, you know, color nuances, those shades that are also, you know, in the design lines. That's really cool. And again, the driving feeling of the hatch and sedan are somewhat similar. 
Is the hatch a little bit sportier from the feeling? Maybe on a, on a very subjective note, it's of course a little bit better as for the weight balance, probably. Or is it? Hmm. Then again, if you think about the engine is in the front, when you then have a little bit more overhang, might that even even better for the weight balance? Hmm. I guess we could also only find it out when we put both of those cars on the racetrack and uh, compare a lap time or so. Um, yeah, but definitely both comparable, so it shouldn't be a, a matter of driving fun or so that how you base your choice on. You just base it on if you want the trunk length or if you say, I want the car to be shorter to be able to park in and out easier in the city because this is sedan, of course, with this 20 centimeters longer or like eight inches. That is, of course, an issue maybe when, when parking in and out. Um, but if you want to use more trunk, then of course this one here makes more sense or just for putting in longer things because as I told you earlier, exactly those 20 centimeters overhang are the 20 centimeters length, more length in trunk you also get. Yeah, so especially in those winding corners, Sky Active X a little bit more fun. And again, the car, calm here. Yeah, you know, those really fierce pop potholes that you know, adaptive suspension could make it maybe a little bit better. And you see when I'm in those corners, the car is not leaning towards the corners too much. So we still can keep it relatively stable. I think they found a good suspension setup here. It's still comfortable, but it's sporty enough. See, when I induce a slalom right here at about 70 kilometers an hour, the car feels very calm. It's not super stiff and sporty, not like this, you know, is that a speed camera? Or maybe is it like, hmm, Bulgarian fans tell me what, what that is. Is it speed camera or is it like a taxation thing or just security? I don't know. Could be speed camera, right? I just slowed down and, <laughs> and just in case you never know then, you know, when you, when you don't know the speed camera layouts, for example, in, in some other countries. Here now the next speed hump. This is actually quite well done by the suspension, this is okay. Here yeah, you can also accelerate in the third gear with the Sky Active X, that's definitely um, you know, good advantage for that one. So I can really have a lot of fun, although I'm not driving a premium priced vehicle and even without some extra equipment that would be even the same driving experience. So not the most sporty one, but it's also not supposed to be. This one is supposed to have a setup where all the car customers that are potentially buying this car are still satisfied with. And I think that's also a, a wise decision, definitely. And maybe you're also picking that on camera, how calm it is here on the inside. So if you compare this one to the previous generation, I think noise insulation is one of the best things they've, they've added. And since we once had the chance to drive old generation then to the new prototype where we could directly drive it after each other which is usually then not available on the driving event because they don't want to present their old cars anymore then we could also feel that the comfort of the seating has also been improved even better than in the 630 so if you think about oh everything was really pleasing i heard and saw today from you but i want a little, little bit more comfort but the same oh no poor kitty mm. i always hate to see road kills it's just like, it really hurts. What about you? So, um, yeah, so if you want this car but a little bit more comfort, go for the CX30. If you rather want the standard compact hatch or compact sedan driving experience with a little bit more, you know, touch to the ground, then you would just stick with that one. But I think it's actually nice that you can pick them, you know, if you have a preference for SUVs or, um, or maybe don't like SUVs, but then you really have the choice to pick. So also great fun here in those countryside corners. And even though we have varied the speed now just a little bit more, the fuel consumption just stayed the same, still about six liters to more kilometers. And as I said, that's then um, close towards this um, you know, 40 MPG US mark and even more than 40 MPG of course, and for the UK MBG, and I think that's overall still um, a very good result. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mazda 3 in the new generation. Today with a little sedan focus and the Sky Active X focus. 
First of all, in general, it's a great price performance deal. That's the main thing about the Master 3 here in the new generation, especially because it has so much standard equipment. Just remember again, head-up display, adaptive screws control, blind spot monitor. This is, you know, actually a lot of extra in price usually for the most vehicles. Then the same size for the infotainment system, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and so on. So pretty cool as for that package. Then hatch or sedan, they drive relatively similar. It's really the question, do you want 20 centimeters longer trunk or 8 inches longer trunk? Or do you rather want you know, a little bit more flexibility when parking in and out? So that's the basic question about that. The driving experience in general is really good, stable and stiff. Also some sportier feeling than the previous generation. Yet the suspension is not super hard, so it's rather set on a comfortable tone, but overall a good setup definitely and a natural steering feeling. Exterior, very likable design, modern design and pretty fresh colors. That works very well. The interior design is also clean and modern. This no touchscreen control. Some might like it, some don't. I got along with it pretty well. Yes, for the address input, that would be cool to use a touch for that. But other than that, most of the other functions are still very well to control, especially then while driving. So overall, they have designed the interior also in a very functional way. The new Master 3 does not have too much room in the rear compartment. That's maybe one of the downsides of this car. As for the engines that are available, Best price performance deal with the entry level petrol engine. Very crisp and nice manual gearbox. So, one of the rare cars where I would recommend a manual gearbox actually. The Sky Active X adds some more agility in driving. And yet, as we could prove today, it seems to have the very same fuel consumption than, this, than the weaker horsepower petrol engine. That's then the advantage of this new technology. So, equal consumption, although you have more power. Today, result was about 6 liters or more kilometers which is, you know, towards the 40 MPG regions US or even higher than MPG UK. Overall, I think a very positive ride, especially considering the price. Yes, the Skyactiv X, of course, more expensive than the base petrol engine. So always the question on, you know, how much money you want to spend. But overall, I think a pretty solid presentation here this car gave to us. And I hope our presentation was also very solid to you. So please tune in next time. Subscribe if you haven't done so far. And see you here at Autofuel.